Ever started a 3D print only to find out it failed halfway or wasted a ton of filament on supports? Trust me, I've been there. But what if I told you there are simple tricks that can save you time, filament, and frustration? Today, I'm sharing six 3D printing hacks I wish I knew sooner. If you are new to 3D printing, or even if you've been printing for a while, these tips will help you get cleaner prints, save material, and speed up your workflow. Stick around till the end, because the last tip will change the way that you remove supports forever. The first hack I wish I'd known sooner is the importance of the first layer when you are 3D printing. The first layer is everything. A bad first layer can ruin an entire print. I have the Creality K1 Max, and every time I print, especially when I'm printing through my phone, I always get the message emphasizing the importance of the first layer. If it doesn't stick well enough, or if it doesn't come out right for any reason, the whole print will probably turn out bad, and you will have to throw it away and start over. So what do you do? First of all, make sure your printer's bed is clean. Most of the time, you can just look at it and make sure there isn't any leftover filament from the last print. But I do recommend once a week, if not more, to clean the bed with some regular dishwash soaper and water and make sure it is perfectly clean. I do know that there are other methods to keep your bed clean, like using alcohol or different cleaning sprays. So take what I'm saying with a grain of salt. But the bottom line is, Keeping your bed clean is the main thing to remember here. Hack number two is using the glue stick when printing. I used to think that it was not something necessary, but then when I was testing out my new wood filament and printed a benchy, it didn't stick to the bed and got all tangly within minutes. In some printers like mine, it's even mentioned on the bed plate itself to use a glue stick. So the questions are why? And do we always have to use a glue stick before every print? As far as the first question, well, the answer is pretty simple. It helps the filament and especially the first layer stick to the bed better. But do you have to use it every time? In my opinion, not all the time. I do find that even after I finish a print, in most cases, the bed remains a bit sticky and that can work for the next print as well. But you have to be careful with that, especially if you do not have an enclosed printer since well, it is glue, and it can make dust and other nasty things stick to it as well. So make sure to see if your bed requires a glue, and also don't go for the expensive ones. A simple glue from your local arts and crafts store can do the same work. Trust me on that. <laughs> Here's the third thing I wish I'd known, the brims. The brim is basically an extension to your first layer of print that is used to hold down the edges of the first layer, increasing the surface that sticks to the bed plate, thus reducing the chance that the print will not come out right. In terms of the brims, a lot of the slicers offer it as a default, and you don't necessarily have to take it away immediately. I mean, at the end of the day, it is something that is so fun to peel off at the end of the print. The brims become extremely useful when you have a 3D model with not a lot of surface that's touching the bed, like this 3D model of a snake that I printed out last month. Usually, this brim prints a very thin layer of filament around the parts of the first layer that comes in direct contact with the bed plate, and you can adjust these parameters in your slicer of choice and experiment with it pretty easily. So if you are planning to print a model similar to that or any model with not a lot of surface area to the first layer and you are afraid that the model won't cling to your bed, the brims are a great addition to increase the success of the 3D print. The next hack I wish I knew sooner is the adaptive layer height feature. As a rule of thumb, you can set the speed of the printer from your slicer and let it do its job, but usually it will print out the entire model with the same speed making the quality of some of the layers, especially the curved ones, look not as good as you want. The adaptive layer height feature allows you to control the height of the layers automatically from your slicer by using thinner layers when necessary, thus increasing the overall print quality. So the result is that in more detailed areas of the print or in more curved areas, your 3D printer will print with a lower layer height, while in areas that are more curved and more straight, the printer will print a higher layer height. You can find this feature in your slicer of choice. For example, here in Orca Slicer, if I take this model and slice it, 
you can see all the different parameters of the model. I will switch the color scheme here to layer height and you can see that the entire model will print at the same height, which is 0.2 millimeter. Going back to the prepare tab, I will now click on this variable layer height button. What this allows me to do here is to control the layer height either manually or let the slicer think and do the adaptive layer height by itself. So here, where it says quality speed, is where you can set the balance between the quality of the print and its speed. The higher the quality, the less speed you're going to get. So by leaving it on the default of 0.50, you can already see the color variations here. The orange parts are relatively more detailed, therefore the slicer will tell your printer to print these layers slower, and the green ones are layers that will be printed faster. You can also slice the model again, look at the layer height, and see the changes before you print. One last thing I will say about this adaptive layer height is that you can also control it manually with your mouse. Just hover with your mouse on a layer, and by clicking on either side, you will be able to adjust the height manually. Tip number five, changing the infill pattern can save you some filament too without losing the strength it provides. The idea of the infill is to give strength by adding some filament into the hollow parts of your 3D model, giving it better strength and stability. Usually, the infill density will be set to 15%, meaning if you look inside your model, 15% of the empty space will be additional printed filament. The interesting thing here is the pattern of the infill. Depending on the model you have, you can change the infill pattern, making your model stronger, and even in some cases, it can shorten the printing time and save filament, even when you're using the same 15% density. I found a really great guide on prusa3d.com that I will leave in the links below if you really want to learn more about each pattern's strengths and weaknesses. Tip number six, when do you add supports? Supports are necessary to almost any model that you print when you have all these angles and bridges that basically should be printed in mid-air. But even when your printer offers to add supports automatically when you slice a 3D model, it does not mean that you have to add them on every print. This simple overhang test will allow you to know exactly the angle in which you are supposed to start using supports. This model is a series of different overhang angles starting from 20 degrees and going up to 70 degrees. Take a look at the bottom side of this overhang test and you will know exactly at what angle you need to add supports based on your printer and the model. This model is a really life changer for me because it saved me a lot of headaches trying to understand when and where I need to add supports in my models. So there you have it, six hacks to improve your 3D prints, save time and use less filament. If you found these tips helpful, hit that like button and subscribe for more 3D printing content. And let me know in the comments, what are your favorite 3D printing hacks? I will see you on the next video.